Hello and welcome back to Scale Down Customs. This is going to be part three of the Revell 67 Dodge Coronet, the Foos Design Edition. In the previous episode, we got the body painted up and into clear. And so this episode, we're going to be working on finishing up and uh, customizing the interior. So I think what I want to do is a two-tone interior and I'm going to be using the Gravity Colors, the coffee brown leather, and we'll make this a, uh, a two-tone leather interior. So I've got to do some masking. So let's start doing that. All right, for my door panels, I think I'm gonna paint the leather brown first and then mask and then come back and repaint the black. I think that's gonna be easier. So let's go spray some leather.
All right, so as you saw, as I was painting, I was thinking, I was wondering how that was gonna cover on the black and it was really dark. Um, actually not much darker than this, but I decided to go ahead and uh, give it a primer coat and then respray it with the, with the coffee leather. So I think that looks a little bit better, but anyway, I'm gonna get this thing unmasked. All right, that looks pretty good. Kind of a two-tone custom leather interior. All right, so I'm gonna get the, the seats unmasked.
All right, so just finishing up some detail painting on some of the interior pieces, the dashboard, engine block, transmission, things like that. And the steering wheel, I just add a couple different variations of brown um, and then some stripes of black. I'll go over it with some brown again and then go over the whole thing with some Tamiya Clear, either yellow or orange. I went with orange this time to give it a darker look, but a little bit more of a, a wood grain steering wheel. Anyway, so just trying to get some, uh, some of the final parts painted up and ready for assembly. So we're getting close to doing that. So just moving along with some detail painting. I couldn't decide what I wanted to paint the engine block. I was thinking black was going to be a little too plain um, and any kind of a metallic color would just kind of blend in with the black chrome engine accents that I did. So I just decided to go with the just the stock Chrysler Red. So anyway, um, I'm going to get this thing weathered up. I'm just going to be using my Mr. Hobby weathering color. This is the multi black and then their uh, solvent 110 just to kind of take it back off once I get it applied. And then just some Q-tips and uh, paint brushes for application. So my process for this is I want it pretty heavy to start with, and then we'll end up taking most of it back off. And then what this is gonna do is just kind of really deepen those shadows and bring out the texture and a little more realism uh, into the piece. That just gives it a little more depth and dimension. Just uh, like I said, deepening those shadows, bringing out those highlights a little bit more, just makes it look a little more realistic. I'm not trying to make it look dirty and muddy, although it does dirty it up a little bit, but just trying to bring out some texture in it a little bit more. So that's the, uh, that's the idea with that. All right, so we're getting close to interior final assembly and I was looking at the instructions and I noticed that the instrument panel has decals. Now, I already painstakingly hand painted all the, the instrument panels and I thought about decaling over them, but I'm just gonna keep those the way they are and save these decals for something else. Because I have had a lot of kits where the, the instrument cluster does not have decals, so I end up hand painting them anyway, which is again what I assumed with this one, but that's what I get for not looking at the instructions ahead of time. All right, so, Moving ahead with the interior, we are ready to put some carpet in, like I said. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit, put in the center console so that I can carpet around it. And then we're gonna put in our flocking. So for the flocking, just gonna be using the Ken's custom fuzzy fur flocking, um, my tea sifter and some white glue, just Mod Podge, but any white glue will work. And we're gonna put in some carpet. Again, just a little tip, uh, make sure you load your tea sifter first before you apply the glue, because I usually forget to do that. Apply the glue first, then forget that I loaded my tea sifter, and while my glue is drying, I load my tea sifter. All right, now let's put some glue down. Okay, we're gonna let that dry, clean it off, and think we'll be ready for some uh, assembly for the interior. And then I'm gonna get this cleaned up. 
And this is the reason I put down some paper so that I can reuse the unused flocking. These little fibers do get absolutely everywhere, so make sure you don't have any wet paint or clear coat in the process of drying that's exposed to any of these fibers because they will stick to it and they will not come out. So just be careful of that. All right, so after I did such a fine tape job on uh, the chrome panels on the door cards. I even highlighted the chrome trim with chrome, but after I realized that, I realized they were, it's more of an aluminum look, and that's not the look I'm going for. I want the more of the black chrome look, and as you can see, that doesn't really match up. Then I realized that I had sprayed the black chrome, but I had sprayed it over the semi-gloss black, and I sprayed it on way too thick like I would any other paint color instead of dusting it on lightly and building it up on a gloss black background. So I've got those taped off and I'm gonna repaint those gloss black and then black chrome them up with the black chrome again. And same thing with the radiator fan. I was gonna black chrome that and it ended up being aluminum. And the same thing, I realized I had just done that over a primer coat instead of a gloss black base. So I'm gonna get these uh, resprayed and then I couldn't figure out what to do with the bottom of the hood because I, as I sprayed the body color, I didn't paint it thick enough underneath so it wasn't quite as dark as the rest of the body color. So then I thought, well, maybe I'll just paint it black and I don't like that either. So I'm gonna repaint this with the body color clear it then I'm gonna mask off these little some of these sections here and repaint those in the flat black underneath the hood so I'm gonna go get that stuff done and then uh, I think we'll be ready for some interior assembly there we go that looks a lot better See what happens when you pay attention and do things the way they're supposed to be done but you know if you guys have watched my channel long enough you know I like to do things at least two or three times but anyway that looks a lot better I'm glad I noticed that before I started gluing everything together so um, I'm gonna let those finish drying up and I think we'll be ready for some interior assembly go interior completed I 
think if I were to have done it again, I thought about spraying a dull coat over the whole interior before I started detail painting. You know, by the time I had thought of that, I had already detail painted all the door latches and everything, so. But that would have given the leather a little bit more of a dull look. Anyway, there we go. That's the interior completed. So I think that'll do it for this video. Make sure you stay tuned for the next one. We're gonna move ahead with the body, uh, get that thing polished down, get the chrome trim put on, and look at getting this build finished up. So make sure you stay tuned for the next one. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.